lifespan of poverty is going to dramatically reduce their cost sharing and mm -hmm. make healthcare much more accessible. Mm -hmm. Then of course there's the problem of narrow provider networks, um, narrow formularies, uh, problems of, of people who have coverage being able to access drugs and providers that they need. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that a problem that I think snuck up on people a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm a consumer representative of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners and they just finished their spring meeting last mm -hmm. week and uh, decided to make network adequacy a top priority issue mm -hmm. for uh, their health and managed care committee. From what you've been able to see thus far, you've mentioned a couple, but what do you consider the failures of the implementation of the AC up till this point? I don't think that the subsidies are high enough for a lot of people mm -hmm. to purchase good coverage. Um, and that's just a function of how much money Congress was willing to spend. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like Congress is eager to spend more money on this. So mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems has been the Supreme Court decision that made Medicaid expansion optional with the states. And uh, almost half the states have not expanded so far. I think many of them will eventually. Mm -hmm. But that is, I think, the biggest problem because it means that, m that many people are too poor to get coverage, which is just insane. If you could just also touch on the point that you were making this morning about issues with the premium tax credits and where the challenges that you see with that as those move forward into the next tax season especially. Yeah, there are a couple of problems. One is the problem of the family glitch where mm -hmm. insurance is affordable to uh, an employee but not to the family. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, the family cannot get coverage through the exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, again, cannot get premium tax credit. So mm -hmm. that's a huge problem. The other huge problem is, uh, is the problem of reconciliation. The mm -hmm. problem that uh, people who are working in hourly wage jobs and working several part-time jobs and in and out of different jobs, there's absolutely no way they can reliably predict their income for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and if they um, underestimate, then they don't get the premium tax credits they're entitled to. They may not even be eligible for premium mm -hmm. tax credits in states that don't expand Medicaid. If they overestimate, they're going to have to pay the money back. And that's going to come as a huge shock to people uh, who may not have any resources to pay it back or may be depending upon getting a refund uh, to take care of some urgently needed expenses and then mm -hmm. find that it disappears because of reconciliation. So the original bill had some pretty tight limits on payback, clawback, and it's a real shame that those were taken out of there in subsequent amendments. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems like uh, the directions that we probably should be going are not the directions that are politically possible right now. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, and thank you for the opportunity.